In two days, the Light Tonight Festival will return to the Civic District for its fourth edition. And this year, the 10-day festival is taking on the theme, Invisible Cities. The Civic District will be transformed into reimagined little cities that drew inspiration from sonnets written by four local writers. Monuments will also come to life with artful digital light projections on their facades. Now for more, we're joined by the festival programmer, Jean He and Dawn Joy Leong, a researcher and multidisciplinary artist of Clement Space. Thank you both for coming in. Thank, Thank you so you. much. So Jean, tell us about this theme then of Invisible Cities. How did it come about? Mm. Okay, so I know Invisible Cities draws from the title of the postmodern classic novel of Italo Calvino, uh, which many artists, architects and also uh, playwrights have taken inspiration from to create fictional landscapes and imaginary cities as well. So we thought that related really well back to the civic district which is very much rooted in the past and it's really timely as well. We have just completed uh, our bicentennial year in 2019 and in the course of the year we have uncovered so many invisible parts of the city, be it invisible stories and invisible communities as well. So we really want to continue that conversation into the new year uh, and inviting our artists and audience to kind of um, explore how our perceptions of space are shaped by personal um, stories but also cultural forces as well. Yeah, and you mentioned about the sonnets just now. Mm. Yeah, oh, so um, one of the one of the mention, uh, some of the things we did differently this year was, of course, to um, think that um, hey, could we just get um, who would know Invisible Cities the book best? I would say local writers, right, more than anyone else. So I think we did something different this year when to co-create our uh, festival and co-write the festival brief with local writers as well. So what we did was to invite four local writers to reimagine the ideas in Italo Calvino's novels with in the local context of the civic district and what they did was to pick a spot that they like in the civic district a zoned and with the sonnet that they have composed it became the point of inspiration for all the festival programming okay well i really cannot wait to see how this is like translated visually but um i have um, don joy with us tonight your work clement space now it caters for those as it says here, seeking space away from the noise around us you know tell us a little bit about this multi-sensory experience that we will we will have when we're there Right, well, um, I'm autistic, and um, I'm also researching autism. Um, Clement space is, um, is a personal space, and it's, it's a place where we can get away from the noise and the uh, sensory assault. The cities are very assaultive, and mm. I, I presume light tonight is going to be really busy. Mm. So it's a little nook. Um, this time around, I've made it very personal, so it's inviting visitors to take refuge in my personal refuge. So there will be um, colours, I love colours, and um, speaking from my autistic paradigm, textures to touch is very tactile, um, olfactory, the smells, and we can engage with little objects that will be placed around the room, there are bean bags for people who want to just lie down, and um, the lighting is going to be muted, so no bright lights, just optic fiber, fiber optic lights that you can play with and engage with. So the whole idea is to engage with the space, to engage with objects like autistic people do, like myself. We call it that stimming and that helps us to calm down. So we are inviting regular people, you know, from all walks of life to experience autistic calming. So it sounds like something, a story that you very much want to tell and to share with people. Is that what inspired you to, to approach it in this way? Um, well, the idea of Clement Space came from my um, PhD dissertation. It was inspired by my sensory alert, um, alert uh, assistance dog, Lucy, mm. she's Greyhound. And everywhere we went, I noticed that she would just make herself comfortable, you know, in the weirdest, most awkward spaces. And um, that's where I was inspired to, to investigate this phenomenon. How can we bring our Clement Spaces Clement as in, you know, gracious, um, gentle spaces with us as mental spaces and physical spaces. So one of the things in my Clement Space exhibition at the National Gallery mm. um, is um, you notice that I use very mundane things, um, innocuous things from household, you know, squeegee balls, um, IKEA shelving, because I want people to see that they can recreate this Clement Space in their own space in their own way. So what's the story that you're hoping they will take away you know, with them when they arrive at your Clement space? 
Um, I think we all share a need for respite, uh, whether you're autistic or not. And autism being an invisible disability, uh, it, you know, ties in very well with the theme. We have formed a little invisible um, culture of our own. You know. And um, I would love to um, have people understand that uh, there is such a thing as reciprocal empathy. And when you're engaging with my space, that is happening, you know. And perhaps diversity, to, to appreciate diversity, um, neurodiversity, and maybe someday we work towards um, a culture of neurocosmopolitanism. Yeah, and more inclusiveness perhaps yes, as well. Yeah, and absolutely. Jane, just to get your, your final thoughts, so what are you hoping that your visitors will take away from the Lights Night Festival this year? Mm, I think there are a few, with every kind of new festival, we're trying something new, pushing ourselves to find new ways of connecting with a more diverse range of audiences. So I guess, you know, with Dawn, what she mentioned about the inclusivity, that was really important to us to work with um, you know, artists, uh, artists and audiences from different lived experiences and to present them. So, of course, one way is to create more inclusive programs and giving more mentorship opportunities to young talents as well. So we're hoping that audiences to take away is that um, arts can also be really playful as well and something that is really really enjoyable so one of the new things that I'm really excited to share about and there was a few years in the making was of course we are launching our very first ever large-scale escape game within the National Gallery itself and I think that was really important for us for you know at the festival to be a platform for even grown-ups to be able to interact with art in a very playful kind of way. I think that was really important to us, but also to be able to deepen their engagement in art. So mm -hmm. now as the name suggests for Light Tonight, the, uh, the festival programs begin from day to night as well. We found that the daytime kind of time slot was a fantastic time for us to engage deeper with audiences who are actually very vocal and inquisitive about current affairs. So we're introducing um, you know, a festival forum where audiences can dialogue with the festival artists to find out about ideas and some of the processes behind the installations and performances. But also we're partnering with TED Talks this year to present on a very pertinent question called Why Art Matters Today. But that's just a fraction of the programs that's happening from the 10th to the 19th uh, with over 60 programs. Admission is free. So you can see the full range of programs on our website, like tonight, SG. Uh, certainly does seem like a lot to sink our teeth into and enjoy mm -hmm. as well. Thank you both for coming in. Uh, Jean Hare, Festival Programmer of the Light Tonight Festival, and Dawn Joy Leong, researcher and multidisciplinary artist.